Welcome to Team G503. I am your host, Scott Schiller, and thanks for tuning in. Uh, this video, I wanted to kind of do a little flashback to when we were first starting with this 1943 Willis MB project, and I actually installed the engine into the chassis. I've got a whole bunch of videos that I have not put out yet, and the project is moving along. Uh, I apologize for not having more how-to videos in the recent past, but I'm still working on that tub if you follow the series. The tub is almost done. Thank God, and uh, then I can put some more out. But I wanted I wanted to show you how I installed this engine. Now this is a folding shop crane, as they call it, or some would call it an engine hoist. And there's a couple different ways you can attach your engine uh, to the to hook here, and you can adjust this in and out for different weights and different areas to get into the Jeep. The easiest way to do, I put it in. It was just in the chassis stage, so it was really you know, pretty much easy for me to lift it over the front of the Jeep, put it in. If I was going to do it with my body on the chassis, I would definitely remove the grill. Um, it's not many bolts to take that off. You remove the grill, disconnect all this stuff, and make it so much easier to lift that engine out than try to do it with just the hood up. I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's just a lot easier without that uh, grill on there. My deal in this video, and I asked a bunch of guys, I asked a bunch of professional mechanics I've known, old school guys and, and Jeep guys, and there was a big debate about where to attach uh, either your strap or your chain to the engine to attach to the hoist to lift it. In the video I'm about to show you, I use the outside four uh, head studs or head bolts on the engine and I fasten it with these hooks as per manufacturer's instructions. And I want to show you this little gem. This is what they call a load leveler. And the reason I like it is you can balance out your engine because it is going to be kind of off kilter and you can also adjust this either left or right to get an angle so when you're going to insert your engine into the chassis it makes it really easy to get the drive line all lined up and ready to go and you can connect to the transmission but that, that was my first choice now again some people don't like attaching to the, the head bolts uh, they say you can do manifold bolts the, the strap would be ideal um, you can wrap this around uh, the underneath side you know two or three times and then you can connect at the top, and I've used that for other things, but that's just part of accessories. I'm sure you guys have some of your ideas of your own and what you'd like to do and what safety uh, issues you have with lifting an engine, and please share those with me in the comments at the bottom because you know, any knowledge is good knowledge. One thing I'd like to stress is when you're using the hoist, uh, have yourself a nice cement floor, a smooth floor. The littlest pebble will stop one of those wheels, and then what happens is you get, you get if it suddenly stops, you get to swing. And that swing is when it gets dangerous. So you know, make sure you sweep up or vacuum up around your vehicle before you're gonna install the engine. And then that'll be nice and smooth there. Um, been thinking of a friend of mine, and uh, I'll tell you this little story and then we'll get into the actual technical part of this video. Uh, John Herbert over in Weston Supermare, works for Joe's Motor Pool he, uh, there in the UK. He sent me this 75 anniversary uh, GP hat, which is pretty cool. And I was thinking about him and got a chuckle because when I was in Normandy this past year, in one of the gift shops, I don't know if you can see this, but I bought this pencil with a, with a Jeep on it. It was pretty cool. And I had to have the pencil because we were at dinner one night at a pizza place. And, you know, this young French guy comes out. He's a waiter. And uh, he told us right from the start he couldn't speak French very well. But uh, he went through this whole table of all of us, all the gang from Joe's Motor Pool and Ron Fitzpatrick and I. And he's taking our orders and he's being very good about it. And he, like I said, he told us from the beginning that he did not speak English well. And he gets down to John and I'm sitting across and John's still peering over his glasses at the menu. So he comes down with the pencil and he says, and I, I, I couldn't help myself. I started laughing. I don't think anybody else got the joke. But he pulls his pencil out with his little apron on his, and he says, Sir, what do you want? <laughs> I, I'm not exaggerating. That's exactly how I said it. And I started bust out laughing. And all I could think about was Steve Martin with his uh, comedy making funny jokes. All right, enough boring story. You know, it's one of my favorite ones. Let's uh, go and dive in and we'll install the uh, L134 engine into the GPW. Into the GPW. <laughs> Got the Ford on the brain now. We're going to install the L134 Willis engine into the 1943 Willis chassis. Here we go. The first thing we'll need to do, and I've got the engine currently on a dolly, is install the engine support insulator, part number A7498. We'll be using a half inch lock washer and a half by 20 inch nut. Install an engine support insulator on both sides of the engine mounting plate as shown. Now, I'm going to be able to move this back and forth. I just find it easier to install the insulators first as I'm trying to line up the holes on the frame. It'll actually be oriented like this into the frame or lengthwise to the motor. 
apply a small dab of grease to the input shaft in the very end as shown, and also a very slight amount in the splines and the inside of the clutch hub. This will aid in the shaft sliding smoothly as you would install it into the engine. Using steady strokes on the hydraulic arm on the lift, I'm raising the engine off of the ground just to the point where I can get it over the front cross tube of the frame. Here's where you want to be careful as I spoke about the debris on the floor. Slide very smoothly and surely the engine over the top of the frame. You don't want to get any swing here. As you can see in the video here, I'm being very careful and the engine's still starting to sway. If you get a good sway on that engine, that's when this becomes dangerous. I'll move you to a side camera angle so you can see how I lower the engine into the chassis and will connect to the face there of the transmission. We'll go to the side here. I'm lowering this very slowly and I've kind of got it at an angle already where I think by sight that it's going to line up really nice with that input shaft. Go very slow. You use the little knob on the lift and you can actually control it really well if you, if you just be patient and try. Once I get this close, I will go to the opposite side of the bell housing and I will check through the inspection cover to make sure that the spline lines up as best as it can. Here's where I make my final adjustment, and this is where in the beginning I was talking about the load lever. This is where that will become very handy because I can move this engine back and forth and look inside and I can actually make turns and adjustments to get my angle exactly as I need it. Once you get the engine where you believe it's going to go on, then you can look through the inspection plate on the bell housing, and as you see here, you can tell that these splines, they line up pretty good. If you need to adjust the spline either a little to the left or the right, you can do so by turning the yoke with the transmission and gear. As you see here, it's going to go on really easily. I've taken my time and lined it up, and it's going to pay off. Now, sometimes when you get to this point, you're all inside, it's all lined up and go, you still have that last little inch. You can just wiggle the engine back and forth. Be careful not to bend anything. I'm not trying to tell you to make huge jerking movements, but as you see here, I'm all set to go. I'm going to show you the dowel bolts. They're part number 630101, and they're extremely important in lining up the bell housing to the actual back side of the engine. You'll install the dowel pins on the ears on the engine on each side of the motor going back into the bell housing. Make sure that your backer plate is correctly aligned and the hole for the starter is in the correct spot. And these bolts will go in really easily. And then once you've got those lined up, this is going to, again, this is going to make sure that your bell housing is correctly lined up with your engine. If you don't use the dowel pin bolts and choose to use modern bolts, you stand to run the risk of being as little as a 16th inch off of alignment and having a, giving your throwout bearing a very tough and short life. One last slight little push, and both of them have mated. The surfaces have mated very well, and I'm happy with it. I'm going to show you these kind of closer, these dial pin bolts. The, the head of the nut is towards the rear of the Jeep, or the back side of the bell housing, and the nut and the lock washer is towards the front. I'm going to go back and forth on either side, giving each nut you know, a few turns until I can bring it in probably an eighth to a quarter on each side, just to bring it in evenly and smoothly and attach the engine to the bell housing. The engine support insulator should be really close to the brackets that are on the frame. You can align the two holes of the insulator with the hole frames on the bracket and then insert the nuts and bolts which are size 5 16 by 24 by 1 and the lock washer and nut that coincides. I'm inserting these as shown with the head of the bolt inside the frame and then installing the lock washer and the nut. And for the time being, I'll just go ahead and install these on both sides and I'll just do them finger tight. And after I relieve the pressure that I have, slight pressure that I have still with the lift on here, then I can go ahead, everything's settled in, and I can tighten these all to torque spec. Repeat the same process I just showed you twice on either side for the engine support insulators. And then again, just for the time being now, you can just tighten them down. We'll go back and torque them later. Here is a diagram I found on the internet that shows the exact location and sizes of the bolts that are used in the bell housing application. Unfortunately, a lot of times when these engines are disassembled and removed, the dowel bolts are the first thing that goes missing, and most people wouldn't think they're that important, but they are. If you don't have them for your build, I suggest to finding a set of them on the web. They are difficult to find, but it's not impossible. I'll show you how I installed the bolts on the actual bell housing here. I've installed them with the head of the bolt towards the back side of the bell housing, and then the lock washer and the nut on the front side near where the backer plate is. I'll roll you over the top here so you can see, and those bolts, according to spec, are torqued to 40 foot-pounds. After all the bolts are installed on the bell housing, remove your lift completely from the engine and make sure there is no tension or anything blocking the engine from sitting soundly on the insulators. 
Then go back and the center bolt gets torqued to 40 foot-pounds and the two shorter bolts will get torqued between 15 and 20 pounds. Your engine install is now complete. Thank you for watching. You see, it's, it's really not that hard. Just be really patient and make sure you get everything lined up. Remember, those dial pin bolts, those special bolts that go into between the bell housing there, uh, those are very important to keep things aligned. If you'd like to subscribe and follow along what we're doing with the 1943 Willis MB, we're going to have plenty more other good stuff to show you too. You can do so by clicking on that subscribe button and ding that bell so you get notifications when I post new videos. All right, y'all, thanks for watching. Until next time, what do you want? Keep it safe and happy jeeping.